Shalom. Today we're going to talk about commas. Many people hold the Bible in such high esteem, even in translation, that they say you cannot even change one comma. Well, the original texts have no commas. We'll get to the punctuation marks, which do occur in, uh, in the Hebrew text, but they have applied it specifically to this one verse, and we're going to look at that. So in 2006, a book came out called Eats, Shoots, and Leaves, and it's basically a joke about a panda. Does the panda eat shoots and leaves, or does the panda eat, shoot, and leave? So where the commas are is very important in English. It makes a difference. So the way Isaiah 59, 19 reads in the King James, So shall they fear the name of Jehovah from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, comma, the spirit of Jehovah shall lift up a standard against him. And some people say, wow, what a great difference it would make if they moved the comma. How much more forceful the impact of this concept would be. So they shall fear the name of Jehovah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in, Bam! Like a flood, the spirit of Jehovah shall lift up a standard against him. It doesn't even really make sense in English because flood is not going to ever lift up a standard. If your standard is being moved and tilted by a flood, that means it's floating somewhere and it's already fallen down. The original text looks like this. This is no vowels. And this is one of the jokes I tell my students. You can't read Hebrew unless you know what it says. Now, if we put the vowels in, maybe a few of you can read what it says. We're going to break it down word by word so you see that you can't change the position of that comma. Vayiru, and they will fear. Mima'arav, from the west. Et Shem, the name, Yehovah, of Yehovah. Umi Mizrach Shemesh, from the rising of the sun. Et kvodo, his glory. From the west, they will fear his name, and from the rising of the sun, which is the east, they will fear his glory. The critical part of the verse. Ki yavo, because when he will come. Kanahar, like a river or like a flood. Tsar, the enemy. Ruach, the spirit, Yehovah, of Yehovah. Nesasava will raise up the standard. So you can see when he will come in like a flood, the enemy, then the spirit of the Lord, the like a flood is sandwiched between the he will come and the enemy. There's no way you can pick the like a flood up and move it to something that the Ruach Elohim, the, the spirit of God is doing. It won't fit there. It's like a flood, the enemy. Hebrew is very different than English. The the sentence often starts with the verb, when he will come, how, like a flood, who is coming, the enemy, then something else will happen. Now there is a system of, it's not only punctuation, it goes back to the time of when the vowels, maybe in the 6th or 8th century, were inserted, and these are the different symbols. Some of them are above the line, and some of them are below the line. Some of them are called conjunctive, and some of them are called disjunctive. Conjunctive, one thing joins to the other. Disjunctive, two things are separated. The other thing that the candelation marks show, aside from the grammar, they show the pronunciation, a stress on a, which syllable, and they also are a musical notation. I've talked about this elsewhere. The musical notation is not uniform hardly at all across the globe. It is different in every culture. And I've tried to circle all of these signs. They, they, they get in the way of the vowels a little bit, but hopefully you can see them. Many of you may know the Etnachta, which you see under the Dalid in the third line, et kvodo, that little wishbone there, that marks the halfway point of thought in the verse. Over the, like a flood, like a river, over that resh, there's a little conjunctive. It joins to the next one. 
that little arc. Over the enemy, the Tsar, there are two dots, one on top of the other. This is a disjunctive. So the like a river, like a flood, is joined to the enemy. A little pause. Now we go on to the next thing, the spirit of Yehovah. And you see under the resh, there's a little arc going to the left. And under the vav, it's hard to see. It's in the way of the vowel. There's a little arc going to the right. And so these two things are joined together, the spirit of Yehovah. But clearly, the pause is after the enemy. So from every direction, English, Hebrew word order, Hebrew cantillation marks, there is no way that you would want to move that pause when the enemy comes in like a flood. The spirit of Yehovah will raise up a standard. It cannot be when the enemy comes in, little pause, like a flood, God does something. It cannot be that way from any point of view. So you have a little flavor of some of the difficulties of doing translation. Many times we see he said to him, his, blah, 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 and there's a lot of people involved in those sentences. We don't know who is he and which is him, and it's very confusing. Sometimes the cantillation marks can help figure that out. So here's another case where we will be looking at a small translation issue when we see Isaiah 40, verse 3, in the King James, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, pause, prepare ye the way of Jehovah, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And so what we have here, in the second word, you see two dots. In the third word, there's two dots with a line. These are both zakef, one is katan and one is gadol. One is a big zakef and one is a little zakef. And they're both disjunctive. So the question is, where does the Bamidbar, where does the in the wilderness go? And we're going to see in a minute that some people have a different idea. The next little arc to the right shows that it's connected to the thing before it. And that is the word which is translated as prepare. It really means to turn towards something. Because of this, this conjunctive under the prepare, people have chosen to put the wilderness in the prepare. So we have several examples. The JPS 1917 version says, Hark, one calleth. Pause. Clear ye in the wilderness the way of Yehovah. Also the ESV, a voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way. So they are attaching the wilderness to where the preparation is, as opposed to where the person who calls out is, the way that it is in the King James. Also the Net Bible, a voice cries out, in the wilderness. So that's a little interpretation of which of those two pauses takes precedence, and what, where does the wilderness belong to? Does it belong to the crier, or does it belong to prepare the way? So here's an interesting question. This you might recognize as the first verse of Genesis, the first verse of the Bible. And you see the first mark there is that conjunctive. It's joining to whatever came before it, except nothing comes before it. So this is what the rabbis will teach about the bet, the letter bet of Bereshit, the beginning of the Bible. It's open only on one side, on the side going forward towards the letters. So if there was anything before the creation that we know, it's none of your business. I pray you are enjoying your studies as always. Keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.